everybody welcome back to the youtube channel a great god bless you to you all thank you so much for joining me thank you all of my subscribers and a special welcome to my new subscribers god bless you today we're looking at the topic welcome to the real world and i'm going to be reading out of second kings chapter 6 from verse 8 to 17 and i'm reading from the king james version and i read in your hearing then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants says, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, tell it the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots, and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they be with us more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence. As we break bread today, we just ask that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will be upon us. I pray that this word will go forth and that it will perform as you have ordained it to perform. I pray, God, that somebody will be loose, somebody will be strengthened, somebody will be encouraged, and somebody's life will be transformed. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. Welcome to the real world. We often talk a lot about reality. And we say the reality is this and the reality is that. But I want to say to us today that the reality that we ought to lay hold to as believers is the reality of the word of God. It is also the reality of the realm of the spirit. God is an eternal being. He's a spirit being. He lives and does everything that he does from eternity and time is just a small capsule in eternity and so when God speaks a word it is forever the Bible said settled in heaven because literally God is eternal and his words are timeless so when God speaks a word it is automatically forever or eternally settled in the heavens Jesus said that a man can receive nothing unless it is given to him from heaven. So I want you to understand that everything that God has done or will do is already done and already sanctioned, signed and sealed in the realm of the spirit. Now, if you are going to see the manifestation of the will of God in your life, you've got to get in alignment with the blueprint that he has for you. And you can only do that when you tap the realm of the supernatural because time is just a capsule in the eternal plan of God and so God knows exactly who you are where you are and what he wants to accomplish in your life now Jesus understood this very well the Bible says that he was slain before or from the foundations 
of the world. When John saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. In other words, Jesus was slain before he was even born. The conclusion of the matter was settled in the heavens before he even went to that cross. And I want to say to you today, the conclusion of your life, the conclusion of your purpose, the conclusion of your destiny is already signed and sealed in the realm of the Spirit. So regardless of the delay that you may be facing and the frustration you may be facing, God has already declared and signed off on your outcome. So it is impossible for the enemy to overthrow and to overrule what God has already assigned and settled and declared over your life. And, and so we see Elisha in the scripture because Elisha understood the relevance of the realm of the spirit. He understood that in order for him to survive, he had to get divine intelligence from Almighty God. And so he lived in the spirit. He not only lived in the spirit, but he walked or progressed in the spirit. He was a man who understood the times that he lived in. And so he acted accordingly. Now, Elisha had a double portion of anointing. He was a, he was the successor of Elijah and had that double portion, not only because he desired it and not only because Elijah was taken away, but also because of where he stood in time. He needed a double portion to be able to deal with all of the things that were happening at his time. He needed a double portion to operate on the level that God wanted him to operate on concerning the things he had to deal with in, in his era. And I want to say to us today that God is commissioning us to come up higher. He wants you to come into the real world and to get the double portion you need so you are able to survive the things that you are going through. And a lot of us are going through negative cycles and experiencing things that God is saying that enough is enough. And in order for you to break that cycle, in order for you to get to the next level, in order for you to break free, you've got to get back into that alignment with the real world. You've got to come into alignment and agreement with what God has declared over your life from the foundations of the world. And in order for you to do that, you've got to get in the realm of the spirit. It is time for a double portion. The brook has dried up. You are no longer able to to sustain yourself on the level of anointing that you are used to. God is saying that you've got to come up and get a rebaptism in the Holy Ghost. It's time for you to be baptized one more time with the Holy Ghost and with fire. God is saying that you are living your life based on what you see with your eyes and what you're able to perceive with your natural senses. And God is saying that that is not the place that he wants you to live at if you're going to survive in this season. Your spiritual senses have got to become sharpened and alive and you've got to walk in that double portion. And so because Elisha was in this place, he was able to preempt the activity and the attack and the strategy of the enemy. In other words, he was able to see the enemy coming from a mile away. And God is saying to us that we are often blindsided by the enemy. We become reactive because we never saw the thing coming. We never saw the arrow coming. We never saw the attack coming. And God is saying that he does not want us to live in a reactive uh, in a reactive mode when it comes unto him. He wants us to be able to see the thing coming and to hide ourselves. The Bible says that the wise man sees the danger coming and hides himself, but the fool just walks headlong into it. When you are out of touch with your spiritual senses, when you are out of touch with where you're supposed to be in the realm of the spirit, when you are out of touch with the, the level of anointing that God has called you to walk in, you will become blindsided. Things will catch you off course. You will be hit off balance. You will not be able to perceive uh, 
the onslaught of the enemy until he is in your face. And God is saying for this season of your life, if you are going to accomplish the thing that God has called you to, if you are going to walk in the dimension that God has for you, you've got to, you've got to get into the real world. You've got to overcome and dominate the thing in the spirit before it subdues to you in the natural. You've got to conquer on your knees before you go out there attempting to conquer. As a matter of fact, when you hit it and conquer in your spirit, you don't even have to do a thing but just show up in the natural. Because once the thing is conquered in the spirit, it has to give way in the natural. And a lot of the things that we are dealing with, we are attempting to contend with them naturally because they, they appear to us as though they are only natural occurrences. But this is not so. Everything you see manifesting in the natural has a spiritual origin. Something happened to produce that thing. Something happened to produce that thought, that idea, that action, those words. And so you have got to become spiritually intelligent. You have got to become discerning in the season of your life so you are able to unmask the devices of the enemy. It's time for you to walk in a realm of revelation that you have never known. It's time for things to be exposed in your very presence. It's time for the secret things to be revealed to the believer and God is saying that there are things he wants to release and reveal but if you are out of place you will never grab hold to it have you ever been searching for something and the thing is right in front of you but you are looking in the wrong place and God is saying your breakthrough is right in front of you. Your next level is right in front of you. The solution you are seeking after is right in front of you. The direction that you need for your life is right in front of you. But you are the one that is out of place. You are the one who has not tapped into God the way you need to tap into him. You are the one who is not hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church. God is speaking, but our senses have become dull because they are not being exercised. Elisha's servant reacted to what he saw in the natural. Elisha's servant was looking at what was already produced in the natural. Could not perceive its spiritual origin did not understand who he was did not understand the rank and the mantle of the man of God Elijah had to pray that the eyes of the serpent be opened in other words he had to pray that the, his spiritual eyes became open so that he was able to perceive and to see in the realm of the spirit. And I pray today that your spiritual eyes be open. Because even if you are physically surrounded. Even if you feel like you can't go any further. And if another problem comes you're going to go under. If your eyes are open. To see that there are more with you than they that are against you. To see that the host of God is gathered on your behalf and poised to fight for you. Then you will be encouraged. Then you will be strengthened. But we can no longer go into situations and circumstances spiritually blinded. You have to know who you are. You have to know whose you are. You have to know what you are called to. And what God has laid at your disposal as a believer, as an anointed vessel. Regardless of what you are seeing in the natural, know that you are a citizen of heaven. 
Know that you can, you can contend with a natural situation when you get in the realm of the spirit and you can subdue it. I want to encourage you today. The Bible says that if we live in the spirit, we should also walk in the spirit. Literally, if we are existing in the spirit, we need to progress in the spirit. And if it is that the anointing on your life is not breaking through the barriers that you are facing, it simply means that you need a double portion. It means that you need to go deeper. It means that you need to press into God like you've never pressed before. It means that you are too shallow and that you need to get to a deeper place in God. The invitation is out. The spirit and the bride is saying, come, come up higher. Come up into the dimension of kings. Come up into glory. Live your life from this place. The Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers. Don't just visit this place. Live there. Live in the real world. Let the thing be decided in the realm of the spirit and then you come out in the natural with all confidence and execute what God has assigned you to do. It is time for us to return to God's original intent. His original intent that is that in him we live and move and have our being. Not in him we visit Go back into glory because everything that you need, everything you are yearning for, everything that is challenging you is letting you know that there is a deficit in your walk with God. God is calling us and commissioning us to come up. And as you go through this week that is coming, make a decision not just to, to visit the presence of God, but make the decision to make his presence your lifestyle. God bless you.